Welcome back. It is still me. Today was a lovely day. It was about 25, 26 degrees. It's been overcast most of the day. It's been a breeze. This, these days, it's warm enough. These days, I could, I could do this for the rest of the year, for the rest of summer. This, this is, this is fine. So the wee tot. Oh, and by the way, thank you for clicking on the video. Uh, the wee totty is uh, doing well. Gave it some medicam. Gave it some electrolytes. Gave it a bottle. It's drinking from mom, but still not greatly mobile. Pardon me. Uh, this thing is repaired as you'll see in there there's a connection I just find it was easier to do that than then replace the whole hose uh, as you can see brand new ac pump looks fantastic worked really good worked worked really good You see something that looks out of place here? Does that look like burning? You would be correct. That is burnt paint on the pulley. I got five bales made down at the silage field. Great looking crop. There's another gopher. They are everywhere. Anyway, uh, it was going great and then I smelled burning. And uh, then the air had stopped being really cold. Like I said, it's not a really, 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 really hot day. So I'm gonna take the belt off and go back to work. I've messaged Dennis. I'm not blaming this on Dennis and not even remotely like Dennis and uh, the, I can't remember the name of the the uh, truck mechanic that is with him. Like he's a, they're both really good guys. This is not their fault. He thinks it's a bad pump. I don't know. I can't touch it right now because it's absolutely freaking hot. So once I uh, once it cools down, I'm going to go for supper. Once it cools down, I'm going to back off the adjuster, take the belt off, and then check the pulley. Um, and see how stiff it is. Because if it has just gone and locked up, then that's not good. So I don't know. This is in his hands. We do have some good news on the orange tractor and I'll fill you in on that later. Um, but like I said, I'm going to take the belt off and go back bailing because it's not terrible tonight. Uh, i got to go to the water trough at some point. Um, yep, that tractor, the oil cooler is in. It's all good and ready to rock and roll. Because I need that tractor to put that water trough in place. Because I need to put a panel in to cordon the cows away. From. Oh, you can feel that. Oh, if you could feel that, that breeze. Oh, gosh. Oh, hey, girls. Squeakers and Eddie. Loving it. They're loving their new shelter. Hey, squeaky chicks. Anyway, I'm going to go for supper. I'm going to get some green there. Um, yeah. Because uh, I just can't bear to. Think about how unlucky that is, that if we have waited a week for a compressor to come in, showed up, it was the wrong one, overnighted the next compressor, it's the right one, and it locks up half a dozen bales in. Yeah, so I'm going for supper. Honest to gosh, overload of cuteness. The old bale site, we just spread the old the old uh, hay out to kind of mop up all the mucky stuff around there. The babies just love laying in little divots there. Flies are bugging the crud out of them, but... Oh, wee souls. <laughs> yeah, right from the living room window. Yeah, I had to make a bit of a painful phone call today. Tires are done, guys. Yeah, I think I'm on borrowed time. Yeah, 
when uh, when the outer layer on the tires are starting to come apart. Funny thing is, it's not that bad for a uh, stubble broke. Like the back tires are still pretty good. It's just ironic, the front ones are going all to crap. This side's not so bad, but that's a pretty bad break right there. So, ordered a set of tires today. What are you doing now, Piper Dog? Well, as you can see, there's some spits of rain. I'm not, I'm not mad about it. I'm not. I, I really am. And, you know, um, so yeah. Uh, I'm going to start hauling in the bales off the headlands over here because that stuff is already growing so high. Uh, so I'm just going to start stacking bales, uh, getting them off the field. So when I'm turning and getting the inside stuff baled, they're out of the way and it lets all the stuff grow and I'm just starting to get organized. Uh, big news. So I'm going to enter a picture here. I'm going to enter, oh, sorry, the battery low thing. And a picture here. So after that orange tractor being up the road for four months last winter, Dennis and the guys at Jody's were in the tractor half a day and found that. And going back to last year, I had thought it was the charge pump wasn't giving the main pump enough flow because it could lift bales like really well once it got flow. So that told me the main pump was okay. And then when you would turn the steering and clutching and you're running the loader, it would proportion out the clutch because it, it says in the book, it gives the steering number one and then after that. So what you're looking at in that picture is uh, an O-ring and then there's that uh, hose that is the main oil feed to the charge pump to the main pump so of course it's not getting the oil pushed to it the main pumps having to pull the oil through the gap so yeah needless to say uh, Dennis has got to order up that bit of pipe the new o-ring and uh, that metal piece of pipe as well because it's quite badly worn it's 12,000 hour tractor so fingers crossed we should be good to go reason i'm saying that is i need the orange tractor back to put the big bucket on so i can clean up the bale yard before i start doing final load so that's where we're at so i'm going to keep doing this and wait for this rain shower to pass hopefully it's not too long because uh that stuff that hay there is nice and ready to bale so this is not going to harm it. this shower is like it's nothing so anyway let's get on where are we at now, Piper Doug? Holy moly. We're in the belly of the beast, y'all. So, as you can see, Piper Doug's uh, repairs to the, the wings, the uh, deflectors, whatever you want to call them, looks working pretty good. Catches a little bit, but no, nothing to be getting upset about. So, at the end of last year, I put on a whole bunch of blades that I had repaired. They were bent blades. Bent blades are twisted blades, ones that maybe got a little nick on them not long after they were installed. So I sharpened them and straightened them. So that's these ones. And as you can see, that. So what you're looking at, that's 200 acres. That's 200 acres of cutting. And we have stones, we have molehills, we have gophers, we have badgers, we have foxes, we have coyotes, we have all the... Look, there's one right there. Uh, big difference this year, as I probably tilted the head back another couple of inches. Um, we could afford to because we've got plenty of crop where it counts. Uh, but what's the point in taking all that stem when it doesn't do much for you anyway? So as you can see, I'm actually putting some of the uh, leftovers of the recycled blades on to finish out the first cut. 
So, like this blade here, you probably could sharpen it and put it back on, but I won't. I've got I've got new blades ready to go, but these are like you can see. These were twisted, and I straightened them in the press. So these are going on, and uh, so yeah, that's what we're doing. Gonna switch as many of the blades as I have right now, and then I'll run and grab the new blades, because yes, I forgot to go and bring them. And uh, then this is ready to knock down the center of this south field, and then that's the main first cut done. I might take some off the south dam field. Not sure yet if the cows will need it or not, but uh, we'll see. Um, but for the most part, uh, cutting this stuff here, that will fill what we need for first cut uh, going forward. So, yeah, as you can notice, I have a piece missing on the bumper on this. And that's why this header is getting an overhaul. Um, for the most part, the bodywork is pretty good. Uh, that center piece needs replaced. It's pretty banged up. But the outer skins are pretty good. Uh, the apron needs replaced. Um, but for the most part, I think I'll change the paddles too because they're pretty worn and I think that's kind of why we're we're not getting as even a feed as we should. The uh, auger's got a little some chips on it, but not too bad. Like I said, we don't have a we have plenty of stones, but not as much as some folks. But anyway, I'm gonna get back to this because all the chaff is getting blown on the back of my neck, so that's awesome. Anyway, let's get going. <laughs> Okay, so there's a new uh, a new thing here at the Shire uh, because we have the Bowman cattle oilers which work really good but as all the cattle people know uh, cows legs will still get eaten quite badly so I've been thinking if we had like a little handheld spare something that's inconspicuous then the animals wouldn't see it coming so I've never had one of these little sort of uh, shop pumps. I meant to get one because I would just put diesel and oil in it that way for spraying down chains and stuff. But my principle is this, and then we bought one of those metal ones that you pressurize with air, but I wanted one that we could just use repeatedly and test the two of them. So, fill it with diesel, and then you put a shooter glass of malathion in it, and then, uh, you turn the nozzle, you unscrew it a couple of turns and then it makes it put out a jet and you can walk by the cows and spray their legs and they don't even know what you're doing. And it was instant relief to the cows. So we just did the 10 cull cows and the calves and the pen there. We did the two young girls that are still the cab out here. I got some on that stupid bull uh, Hereford out there because he's covered in them. <laughs> Uh, until he started running away because this thing was running out of diesel and started hissing at him and he's just a big Jesse So There you go Piper Doug tip this week I haven't tried the metal in it, but this this is already proven itself to me worth its weight in gold Just like I said fill it with diesel put like half a shooter glass or a shooter glass worth of malathion or whatever you got and then yeah, just go and finish dress your animals with a little bit of this, and like I said, it was instant relief. Oh, there you go. Welcome back. It is Thursday the 25th. 
So, second brand new AC compressor has been installed and is currently working. Fingers crossed, like a charm. It's working so good that I actually have the AC turned off right now and it's still working. But I think that's because Dennis actually hardwired the switch because they needed to rule out different things that were that could be wrong, whether it's a bad switch or bad wiring in the tractor somewhere. So I think the AC is just wired on full stop. So we're getting into this silage field here. So we're just a ways in. So we're at 100 bales already. This field always does do better than the big quarter. It's actually doing about twice as good, so that's awesome. Yeah, and that's why I like night wrap because it takes about 12 seconds to wrap a bale. Start to stop. So, uh, so you can kind of see that it's starting to come back already. Uh, the centerpiece. The crazy part is it's just it's over two weeks since this since we cut the headlands in this field and uh, I wish I could have showed you but on the on the headlands when I'm turning I don't have enough time and hands to film and turn because it's actually starting to flower the headlands are back in flower again yeah so that's weird so it's like two, it's actually closer to two and a half weeks since we cut it, so I don't know, I'll have to go back to the videos. But anyway, so that's kind of great and a bit complicated because uh, I still have to turn on the headlands. But uh, it just means that we'll end up cutting the headlands separate again for the second cut, so nice problem to have. Oh, there's a stone right there. So one thing is I don't have a stone box in this tractor. Anyway. To keep bailing. It is currently 30 degrees to be 33 before the humidex, about 40 degrees with mid, mid 40s with the humidex. So, yeah, that sucks. So, we're gonna bail for a couple hours and then give the tractor a rest. I'm gonna run up to John Deere and get the new belts for the balers and the new rocker shaft for uh, the little John Deere tractor uh, three point arm because uh, it's worn out and leaking. Which we kind of knew that. So, anyway. Here we go. Back at her. Okay. I just, just did a test there. So, from when the last of the swath goes into the pickup header and the buzzer's going off till the next time swath is going into the header after the bale is tied and gone and back to work. 18 seconds total so that's from about to hit the clutch to the clutch is back out and I'm going so keeping under 20 seconds I'm good with that okay back at the cutting for the night as you can see over there lots of bales it's still close to 30 degrees right now and it's 9.30 at night the the blue tractor started getting a bit hot towards the end of the day, so I shut down early and went and pressure washed the radiators and cleaned the air filter and just gave the engine a good old wash because it was kind of covered in dust and chaff and stuff. So it might help it run a bit cooler, but it's supposed to be cooler for the next few days. So just going to show you all this because I've been talking about this in the other field. If you look over here and see these swaths. We're actually up on top of a sand hill right now. Might be hard to believe. But back to our, what I was talking about before when we went zero till. Uh, we did zero till for well over 20 years. And then this got sewed down to uh, a hay, uh, alfalfa, many, many different types of grass as you can see from here. Uh, four years ago, this was sown down. So this is a, this is its fifth season, I think. So it's really come in good. Like it did grow decent crops, but uh, we figured best is to retire it for a while. 
and kind of glad we did because as you can see the swaths those swaths are over seven feet wide so yeah it's uh it's a great first cut second cut is usually quite sporadic down here because when you're on sand you usually get one good cut and then you'll get sort of uh areas on the second so we'll see what happens and get back uh we are having issues with this machine those rpms there are supposed to be at 2500 uh it seems like the solenoid that governs from the hydraulic pump to the header or something's wrong with it so I was talking to them up at Shoal Lake today and they said it's $340 for the switch uh, or it's, uh, I don't know, 50 bucks or something for the O-rings but they don't have a guy that can come and test it right away so I'm just working away right now a little bit slower than I should be but it's not so bad because there's a lot of molehills down here so let's get on Waiting for dust to come along the road it is currently 9.30 in the morning and as you all know, Piper Dub doesn't normally start work this early. Uh, I don't know if I've told everybody, the, I'll, I'll talk about it later. Uh, I'm waiting to meet a guy here. Got all those lovely bales. Because we have a project, as you can see the skid steer sitting here. And uh, yeah, made for Max Tolton works for Cochrane Sand and Gravel, Cochrane Stock Farms down at Sioux Valley. Um, good friends of ours and ironically Mrs. Piper Doug who is from Brandon, city girl, who's a heck of a country girl now. Uh, she grew up with, well she grew up babysitting the Cochrane boys so um, she knows them professionally through council as well because as some people might not know Mrs. Piper Doug is the deputy reeve of the uh, amalgamated municipalities around here. So, yeah, so Max is coming to do a project for us and uh, I will bring you back. Oh, I see the top of a truck coming along the road now. So, uh, I'll bring you back once uh, Max gets started. Ooh, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be exciting, it's gonna help a lot and uh, a lot of the projects are coming up, so let's get after it. There we go. Max is hard at her. Yep. Beauty big Volvo. Nice machine. Come in on the old freight shaker. He's doing his best to save as many of the fence posts as he can, and he seems to be doing really well. The downside is that the uh, fencing wire is still tangled up at the bottom there, so just kind of left it at it. The fencing wire comes with the trees, and he can just drag all the trees, because what he's going to do is he's going to pull the trees over onto the grass here, and then at the end, if he still has time today, which he should, He's just going to drag them all across to the edge of the workable field and just put them into the ravine where we can either burn them or just leave them there to break down. They're not in the way of anything. So, hopefully we can just get a little bit of action here. Like I said, he's just, like, there's a lot of broken trees in there. So he's basically grabbing them out of the way and then just knocking the standing trees down where he can grab them with the thumb and then just uh, yank them out of the way, so. Yeah, I know my windshield is not the cleanest. Make it a little bit cleaner. got him here for the day so this will be huge like I said this way we can get this cleaned out we can get the new fence up and then the plan is to put a new tree row all the way down this fence like uh, like what we planted out here the Scots pine and cottonwoods not these uh, these junk poplars This is just 
given her. So he's done all the rest of the half mile down to this bit and then he's come down to the end of the half mile and he's working his way back up to that. So he's taking nice big chunks. So yeah, he's just windrowing it behind him to get it off the fence and see where we're at after that. So. Nice! Way to go, Max. Welcome back. It is Sunday. So, yeah, our uh, bush clearing guy came yesterday on Saturday for half a day. Got the whole bottom end finished. I think I maybe showed that already. So he's back up to the big pile at the north end that's, that's sitting on the pasture right now. So I had said to him that if he has time still on his, uh, like his window, because they fitted us in, busy summer and all, uh, that they can gather up that pile of trees and stuff and move them off the field like they did with that pile in the middle of the screen there. So, as far as I think, he's supposed to be coming back tomorrow and just get the get at her and get that pile done and it should be done because he's done a cracking good job down here anyway. So, what are we doing? Well, as you can see, the baler is cockeyed. <laughs> so, we had a noise. I think I might have already talked to you about this. Uh, so I want to pull up a couple of sprockets and uh, see why because the last thing I want is to have a baler fire and I'm thinking it's in that lower drive um, it's either one of those two sprockets uh, those bearings there um, there or there because um, it was the only ones that were hot that I could feel Outside of that, just working till the uh, bearing blows apart, which I don't want to do. So, uh, gonna get at her. Okay. Um, well, this is my first time uh, in this area of one of these balers, because, like I said, I'm pretty new to the world of 567s. Seems like I've got a bit of a leak in here. Hmm. Anyway, so quiet as a mouse pretty quiet um, I went ahead and took the chain off this side and That sounds awfully like dry bearings to me. Yeah. See, that's nice and quiet. Yeah. So it looks like I know what we're doing. Yep. Where's my buddy? There's a couple of big hawks that like to follow me up and down the field. So yeah, here's the weird thing. I don't know if everybody else is like this. Like I said, there's still lots of eating out there and they like to come out here onto the the uh, paddock to get the new shoots. And they all just stand around the water trough and hang out. So in one of the next clips, you're gonna see them getting the last two of our first program paddocks. So they will be in, there's the gate right there that's the one that we installed you know you and I <clears throat> we did that together so yeah we installed that this spring so that way they'll get the next two paddocks and that by middle of August they're going to come into the south ravine which is just on the other side of this cut hay and then they'll go down to the south field and that's what's different this year we're actually putting the mums with the younger babies well mums with the babies while they're younger to the far away part of the section while they're still all 
uh, drinking from the mums. So we figured that way that at the end of summer, when they come back to start in the north ravine, and at that point the fence will be done, as the calves get older and they start to wean, the, uh, we'll be able to keep an eye on them a lot more. Apparently I'm leaking somewhere. Uh, and then they'll get the north ravine, because I'm not cutting any of these two fields, as far as I know right now. Um, because we don't need, we don't need that, uh, the bales this year so much, because there's not as many people on our shopping list. Um, and plus, I'd far rather we feed the cows on the ground longer than bale feeding last year, because for those who are new to the channel, we fed nine months out of 12 months last year. Now we feed the paddocks by the house all year long, that's a given, but that's not a lot of bales. But when you're feeding the gen pop, the big herd, nine months out of 12, that bites into your uh, your bale program. Anyway, what I was gonna say to you was, this is a big shout out to my dad. My dad is helping fix the baler today. Cause this is one of dad's. Came from his shop. And I don't know whether this came from one of the combines that we had, because I know the uh, 8820 Titan II that we had in the 9600 anniversary in 1997, uh, the headers used these, and there was some of the shafts. I can't remember which one's up in the combine. I did a lot of work on the 8820, um, and I know there was a couple of these shafts up on top. I'll tell you, one of the jobs I did was the big uh, cross drive shaft that's underneath the uh, grain tank behind the cab. Oh my gosh, that's a huge, a huge piece of iron. Anyway, so the reason why I know I've uh, got to the right place is as you can see, there's still paint on this bearing, which means it's original. And as you will look here, it's got a homemade seal, or as they would say, a seal killer. So yeah, it's gotten in past the uh, roller and into there and killed the inside of the bearing. So the bearing was going. The bearing was not gone, and I got it just in time before we start a fire, because that would have started a fire. That's melted right into it. So yeah, I can I can barely turn that with my hand. Oh, oh yeah. Anyway, so yeah, there you go, Dad. Thanks for your help. Cause that's a hundred and five dollar bearing. Yippers. So let's get on. So. Yeah, see, this is what I'm talking about. They hang out out there on the paddock and get the new shoots. And then you look at all of this out here. Still lots to eat. It's just bizarre. Like, I don't know why. Lots and lots and lots and lots. So I'm calling them down because they're supposed to get the next paddocks. The plan is to eventually shut the bottom end of these paddocks. And that way they'll just have these far away paddocks. And then these paddocks here can rest. But I'll see if they'll follow me down because they might want a shift. Just a change of uh, surroundings, I think. Okay, well, let's see if we can get them. Oh. Some of them just don't get it. them into the new paddock and some of them don't get to go around the gate and into the other other field they just went back and forward back and forward yelling at their pals maybe I'll have to make sure there's a their names are on the list for the end of the year choices so I can't remember uh, if, if I said this already then I, for, I uh, forget anyway so the bearing that I had found in the shop is actually a bearing that will fit this baler. Almost all the shafts, except that one. That one, for some reason, the, the hex shaft is a little bit bigger. It's like a quarter inch thicker than all of the other ones. So that one there, and I think the top one is also a heavy duty hex shaft. So that's fun. So, um, 
So basically, I turned the bearing around so the good seal is against the working side and the bad seal is open and then I, I soaked it in uh, old oil and freed it up and it was, it was spinning really nice. Uh, put it back in the baler until tomorrow because I wanted to get some baling done today because uh, John Deere parts is not open. Apparently Mazers is. Found that out from BCP. But John Deere is not. Not They're uh, short staffed until uh, harvest time. So. so that's fun. So basically, uh, put it back in. Uh, put it all back together and it's still squeaking but it works fine. So then what I did was I went and got a drill bit and I kind of poked a hole in the bad uh, dust seal or seal whatever you want to call it of the bearing and then I got my grease gun with the needle greaser and I pushed grease into that and spun it and pushed grease in it and spun it and it's been doing good it just started really squeaking towards the end there I've done another 40 bales so it'll hold it'll hold until tomorrow so I think we're just gonna order up all the bearings for all the rollers on this baler and the other one and then that way they're sitting ready for the end of the year because we're gonna tear both balers down and rebuild them. I'm not putting the new belts on the balers until the new bearings are on them because that's just not smart. Anyway, it is supper time and we've got to go and put one of the old cows to sleep because she's gone down and she will not get up. So we're trying to teach the baby onto the bottle before we get mum gone to the train station. So that's not a pleasant job. just has to run about a hundred meters to the edge of the workable field and he's just dumping her in a big pile. Like I said that stuff can sit there and break down until the cows come home literally. It'll be good natural habitat because it's in the creek and then uh, we can start getting this all developed because there's another pile there and then there's another pile away down near the bottom there you just can't quite see. So there's three piles all together and they're all off of the workable uh, part of the field. Because that piece has the creek and then there's actually a piece of uh, field in there. But because it's outside of the quarter section fence, it was always just part of pasture. So in the future it might get developed. Don't know. Um, but, yeah, this will be a huge difference, like I said. He's managed to protect, uh, he's managed to save most of the posts in that fence, but I knew there was a few that I'd have to fix anyway. So, uh, yeah, Max, his name's Max Tolton. It's a uh, Cochrane stock farm, so they have cattle and grain, and then they also have a gravel business. So they haul uh, gravel for the local municipality. Actually, my brother uh, hot shot drives for them. He does custom driving uh, belly dumps, hauling gravel for them when he's not uh, hauling liquid fertilizer for red farms. Because he is semi-retired, but uh, he drives trucks. He's, he's, he's always liked driving trucks. Even like when we were hauling our own grain, that's, that was his thing. I can do it, it's not, it's not really my thing. I do like trucks. Like I know, I know a fair bit about these dogs, but I got more, more things, than other things I'd like to be doing. So anyway, so yeah, he just has a little bit left to do, and then he's done. Yeah, you know, I can probably do a little bit of cleanup, but uh, then we'll do a little tour after he's done, and we'll see uh, see how much it's changed the landscape. It's crazy how different it makes it look out here. Nice Volvo though. Not many hours on that rig. The little train that could. Choo choo! <laughs> I need the bale in the front to give it traction. It doesn't have enough weight to pull the trailer.
I get two loads loaded. Just uh, 22 more to go out of this field. As you can see, it's already coming up. Weirdly enough, some of the shorter stuff's already starting to flower, so I don't know if it's terminating. I don't know what they, they just walk. Stop and eat. Back and forward, back and forward. It's bizarre. Anyway, so here's the overview. So, yeah. That big pile there is from this area. And then there's another little pile over there. That's sort of all the little bluffs of scrub here, there, and there. And then you can see there's a pile. So there was a big bluff of trees down at the bottom end there and kind of halfway. So yeah, he literally, he was even, he said, oh, I tried to do my best to pick up all the little sticks and branches that had fallen down into your field side. And then he kind of guddled around in the long grass for some of the trees and branches that were already down in amongst the uh, pasture from through the winter. So talk about going above and beyond. So basically, I just got to go and replace, I think he said three posts got knocked down while he was pulling the tree roots out. So he's basically ripped everything out. There's no tree roots, stumps or anything to deal with anymore. So what I can do now is run the four strand of barbed wire. Well, I've got to put in, uh, <clears throat> oh, I got to put in a strainer there and then a strainer sort of in that area. Uh, and then run the four strand barb, get that up. And then I can pull, because there's two power wires laying out here in the grass, I'll pull them down and then we'll get one along the top of the fence and then if I have time, I'll get the uh, lower down one so it looks just exactly like that because this is going to be the boundary fence for a while. Uh, and then after that, we do have what's called a breaking disc. It's down at the bale yard over there. Dad bought it quite a few years ago. We've actually never used it. There's a piece missing and I'm trying to track down either something to make it work or just make something. Uh, and so I'll bring it out and park it here. And then all we'll do is just once in a blue moon, we'll just run up and down here where the trees were and just till, 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 till that all up till it gets right broken down, the turf, everything, any stones. <clears throat> and then that way, once it's all completely tilled, we'll sow it down to uh, brome pasture, just a grass. And then eventually, what we've got in these tree rows here will go in here. So it'll be the cottonwood, Scotch pine. That way it's not gonna be something that's gonna be wrecking our fences all the time. Because the cottonwoods, They'll go 60 or 70 years before they start to deteriorate and they'll just be big massive trees. So we'll just get them harvested at that point. That's kind of what we're doing here. Once these trees age out, they'll just be harvestable. I don't know what they're doing. Anyway, so, yeah, talk about the bee baby. Um, whoop, whoop. So yeah, there you go. There's 85, 87 horsepower, whatever it is. The bale's on the one there just to give it traction because like I said, it doesn't have enough weight to get up out of the field without the bale on there. So uh, hopefully it's gonna be better news by next video on getting this uh, orange tractor back. So between Dennis at Jody's and uh, the dealership up at Show Lake, they can't find the replacement parts. The consumables so it's an o-ring that plastic pipe if i hadn't put the picture in already i'll stick it in here but if it's already in you can just go back and look at it piece of black plastic pipe uh, i'm imagining it's special because it's got to be in amongst the oil and stuff an o-ring and then that metal coupler so yeah I, i'd imagine between them and the agco network they'll be able to find them somewhere in the world because I really would like to have that tractor because, man, it's a lot faster for doing stuff like this. And like I said in the previous clip, shuttle shift would be so nice. 
as much as this little gadgie's doing really well, it gets a bit old, the old uh, crunching gearbox. So, so yeah, look at that. There you go. Piper Doug's not a tree hugger. Well, I, I actually am a tree hugger. I just not very fond of the uh, junk poplars, as I call them. So look forward to seeing that in one of the next projects. And then as I get the bailing caught up over the next couple of weeks that these guys are in here, uh, these fences down here are the next part of the project because the herd will herd south. The herd will head south. So that fence there, and then there's another fence down in the hollow to get done. So while they're down there, then we'll do this one. So come on back, come on back next week. And uh, you never know what we'll be up to. Well, I'm gonna be hauling bales for a while, as you can see. Unless somebody wants to come and do it for me. <laughs> yeah, I have a bale picker, but uh, I'm afraid that's not fit for the bale picker. Only the blue one or the orange one can run it, because it's, it's a lot. Oh, quit your whining. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Teddy bye.